With the War of Independence over, Israel hoped to reach peace agreements with its Arab neighbors. Under the auspices of United Nations envoy Ralph Bunch, Israel and Egypt reached an agreement in Rhodes on February 24, 1949. The agreement delineated Israel's borders with Egypt. However, it was not a peace agreement. Subsequent agreements were reached with Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, and in each case, the agreement was an armistice agreement and not a peace agreement. Israel now had 600 miles of border to defend, with almost no part of the country being further than 14 miles from a border. In its narrowest point, Israel was only nine miles wide. The new state encountered many stumbling blocks, one of the first being how to govern itself. The interim government that ruled during Israel's War of Independence was an extension of the Vad Lumi National Committee. On January 25, 1949, Israel held its first election. The factions aligned with the Labor Party won 57 seats. The center-right received 31 seats, and the religious parties earned 16 seats. The new Knesset met for the first time on February 14, 1949, and it swiftly passed laws establishing the basis for a government. Chaim Weizmann was elected as the first president, and he was inaugurated as president of Israel. He swiftly asked David Ben-Gurion to, to form a government. That first Knesset was expected to write a constitution, but Ben-Gurion decided that the issues of state and religion and other factors made it too complicated at that moment to create a constitution. Instead, it was decided to allow a series of basic laws to develop over time. That decision was probably one of the worst decisions Ben-Gurion made. The biggest challenge the new government faced was coping with the continuous waves of immigration. During the period of the British Mandate, Jewish immigration averaged 18,000 per year. Once the state was declared, Jewish immigration to Israel increased to 18,000 each month. Holocaust survivors who were in European displaced persons camps poured in, and the population of the country doubled in the five years that followed the War of Independence. Providing a roof over the head of the immigrants was the government's prime obligation. The initial immigrants occupied every empty room in the country. However, soon there were no more rooms, no more places. The Jewish agency imported prefabricated houses and tried every means possible to build quickly. But that was not quick enough. Temporary tent cities were established. By 1951, 97,000 people were housed in 51 tent cities. There was no employment in those camps. So next, the government established Mabarot, which were temporary settlements made up of cinder block or aluminum walled structures that were very temporary in nature. It took on average two years for an immigrant to move from a Mabarot to permanent housing, but in the meantime at least, from the Mabara he could find employment, something he was not able to find in the ten cities. Some of the immigrants, however, stayed much, much longer in the Mabarot, and that to this day is a source of friction within the Israeli society. Paying to settle and absorb the immigrants was a great challenge. Israel was importing many times what it was exporting. Building houses and creating jobs was very, very expensive. This period was called the Tsena, a period of rationing, where only the bare necessities of life were available, and even those were rationed. Israel relied upon several sources of funding during those first few years. Donations from world Jewry directly to institutions like the Hebrew University, or contributions to the United Jewish Appeal and the Israel Bonds. In addition, U.S. government loans, and finally, reparations paid by Germany to the government as well as directly to the survivors of the Holocaust. While the survivors from Europe poured in unhindered, except later from the USSR and parts of Eastern Europe, Israel undertook a number of national missions to bring the Jews of Iraq and Yemen home to the land of Israel. The transport of Yemeni Jewry was called Operation Magic Carpet, and the transport of Iraqi Jewry was called Operation Ezra and Nehemia. Israel, in its first few years, had gone a long way towards fulfilling Herzl's dream of building a homeland for the Jewish people.